All right, well, I've been recording, man, so. Oh, yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah, I've been recording for like a minute now, so I think I'm just going to start the show off right here. Because, you know, hey, it. look, man, yeah. we, when you when you do a podcast like this, there's no formalities. You know, it's just a comic book superhero podcast. What's the point of, I get kind of tired of sometimes, like, oh, hey, welcome back to blah, 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 blah. My name is Zach, da, 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 da. You're listening to, it's like. They know what they clicked on. They know what they're listening to. They know who I am, or at least my fans do. But for the strangers that don't know who I am, this is Comic Book Weekly. It's a comic book podcast that we do every week, and we just like to have fun with it, man. I'm I'm the type of guy that I like to say sometimes, fuck formalities, right? Right. right. You can't. Yeah, man. I mean, you can't. You, dude, much, you, dude, you can't, man. Come on. Yeah, that lovely baritone voice right there is my buddy Anthony Hernandez back on the uh, show. Baritone. Um, <laughs> The baritone, the lull, dosed tones, man. So, you know, it's 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 nice and soothing when you when you can't sleep at night, you're having trouble, you're tossing, you're turning, you're rolling around in your bed, and I expect a, a nice bill for this sponsorship from you, by the way. But <laughs> turn on, on a tangent, his, yeah. Turn on a podcast that has Anthony Hernandez on it, and you will be falling asleep like you've never, and you'll sleep like you've never slept before. But you'll learn something interesting. Exactly. So, <laughs> so useless knowledge. Exactly right. <laughs> so we are back. Uh, this is our third time recording the show because the first time it was Anthony's audio that fucked up, and then last time it was my audio that fucked up. So I figured, okay, let's just call over Skype and I'll just record the whole conversation, so I don't have to worry about whose audio fucked up. So this is the third time doing this, and you know, hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, man. You we know? are just here to refine the hell out of this thing to make sure we know what we're t- I mean to make sure that we well, get down to the nitty gritty. Exactly. And now we can expand on a conversation that we had on the last recording that I really loved, but we didn't get to talk about it too much. So I'm glad that we have this platform again for the third time so we can really get into and deep dive on this topic. And that is Ant-Man crawling Man. <laughs> in <his> asshole <laughs> in and <you>. expanding. <laughs> I told you, man, I'm taking my kids. I don't want that to happen. Oh, my God. Bro, this theory is catching so much heat right now. Or not heat, but so much burn. It's getting so... I'm hearing everybody talk about this. It is... I've seen people make YouTube videos on this shit now. Like animation. It works. It works. It really does. I mean, it really works. You know, the old... Going up the old prostate time loop, you know? I mean, you're... You're, you're <laughs> oh my I, god i hate to say it man but it's the perfect win-win i mean physically physically it is it is really possible like i saw this video it's a youtube video among the probably five to ten hundred that are out there by now it is <laughs> ant-man running it's like an animation like a 2d animation someone made a real cheap look in animation but it was still funny as shit it's ant-man running and then he and then it shows thanos and then ant-man runs around behind him and looks up and you see Thanos' like pants where his ass is. And Ant Man <laughs> he jumps up and then it cuts to Thanos who's doing like a oh face, you know, and then <laughs> inside his ass, Ant Man hits the button and bada boom, no more Thanos. But Oh my gosh. Dude, that is awesome. That is that is scary, that is frightening, but boy, it works. I'm just surprised that it's gained so much traction, man. It's yeah. Been- Right now, I saw one guy say, "If this is not how Endgame ends, I'm going to delete everything I have." <laughs> so I'm telling you, man, people want to see this. So give the people what they want to see, Marvel. I don't want to see Captain America sacrifice himself. I don't want to see Iron Man die. I don't want to see anything else like that happen. I want to see Thanos crawl or Ant Man th- crawl into his Thanos' ass. So no, no, exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, no. Back to serious matters. That's always fun to talk about, dude. Um, I, I love when the fandom creates shit like this, man. Stupid theories and stuff, you know. You know, you got to have fun with it, and I've I've got to give it to you know Kevin Feige and and Marvel Studios, and we finally have we finally have a a a series of movies, but also yeah, I guess a movie that's turned into an event, you know, and and you're you're going back to the old, um days of of hollywood and and filmmaking people look forward to these experiences you know and um i'm glad i'm glad they've done that it's entertaining it's fun everybody's engaged and it is what you know what entertainment filmmaking 
should be. And yeah. um, I'm happy about it, man. I'm happy to share it with, with uh, folks like yourself and, you know, my kids. Um, for a while there, before the uh, MCU, you know, it, you, you know my sentiment about film. And sure. uh, I was really disappointed, you know, disappointed, you know, because it just wasn't anything that was offering anything to anybody. But, man, we've got these whole world this universe that we've been a part of you know my, both of my kids were born into it and so it's fun it's really fun and and as long as we can just entertain ourselves with it hey man why the hell not you know let's talk about ant man going in thanos ass and blowing it up you know it's almost like a new age comic books you know like back in the day of course i wasn't alive around this time i'm talking like in the 60s 70s 80s you mm-hmm. had a comic book universe and every like week or few days or so there'd be a new issue out now I know the movies are a lot more are released a lot less common than that, like once one to a year, but still it's kind of like that. Oh, hey, I'm looking forward to the next story, the next issue, the next movie, basically, you know, because we have a world now. Because like you said, before the MCU, we had this, we had our Spider-Man, we had our X-Men, we had our Fantastic Four, but they weren't connected. They were their own universes. And it just, you know, at the end of the day, you as a fan, you would have wanted to see them all together at some point, but it's just standalone movies. You know, it's it's just it didn't feel connected like it does now. You're right. You're right. And, um, you know, they've been entertaining. <clears throat> they have mm-hmm. had a lot to offer. And uh, um, some of them we can we can debate about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, the fact that we can sit here and talk about it. I mean, it's it's fun. You know, right. let's bring the right. superhero back, you know, and it's right. look, look at the level of engagement it has got uh, amongst, you know, our, our world, whether it's. um whether it's it's uh bringing in fe- you know the, the the female uh superhero or the minority superhero i mean you really have a, a population that is uh, um it doesn't see limitations in in uh, in superpowers or in the superhero uh, universe you know and so they are growing with this they are existing in this world and it makes me happy man you know it's something that's brought a lot of people together yeah, no, no. I mean, a lot of us in, included, like especially me and you, because this is, you know, whenever we talk, we're, we're pretty close friends. We talk about a lot of stuff, but a lot of the times we also talk nothing but comics, man, over the phone or, you know, shit like that. So, I mean, just That's right. just to be able to take this world and, and, and talk about it with other people, it's just it makes it one big universe and community. I, I, I love it, dude. I love it. And I could talk about this shit till I'm blue in the face, Yeah, you know. That's that's yeah. kind of the reason I wanted to make a podcast like this is every every week I could get together with somebody and just sit down and shoot the shit and talk about comic book related stuff and superhero movies. So, you know, it's it's a hell of a platform, man, and I'm I'm uh, I'm proud that you're I'm proud that you're able to be a part of it. Yo, thank you, man. It's it's a freaking honor. And I got to tell you, you know, Endgame may be the end of the Avengers and really the first phase or the first um uh, I guess the the beginning of the lineage of yeah. the MCU universe, but I think it's a springboard for uh, this this podcast and anything else that has sprung up from um, yeah. you know interest in 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 that type of entertainment and that type of world. And um, you know, um, I, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to these things, but I'm glad that people are going to be talking about things like the the quantum realm and quantum physics, quantum mechanics, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, different type of, um, uh, hero philosophies. Um, I'm, I'm big on, you know, on, um, on the human condition and also the human potential. And so it makes me a bit of a nerd, but when we can look back and talk about a hero's arc that has existed since the beginning of time, I've, I've mentioned Joseph Campbell, um uh, time and time again and yeah. how he you know kind of put all that together and gave us a, a, a the format for a hero's journey the three-part journey which this happens to be three hours and two minutes but um <laughs> you know at the same time you're looking you're opening up the door for a scientific uh curiosities you know uh, a lot of the stuff that they are talking about is some of it is is going to be sanitized for pure entertainment reasons but at the same time you know Let's talk about the quantum realm. What is that? You know, let's talk oh. about the possibilities of all this stuff, you know, and, and the ideas of multiverses. And I mean, this is the new world. This is new science. This is not the old Newtonian science, you know, that or theories that we grew up with. And um, now they're getting into some stuff that is has 
there's a there's possibilities, you know, and, and and some of the experimentation is this has actually given us quantified data that this stuff is possible. So this is great. You know, if my kids can say, hey, dad, what is the quantum realm? Thank you, MCU. You know, yeah. you know, my kids aren't asking about the, you know, PewDiePie and uh, T-Series and Mr. Beast or those guys, which is a lot of kids are digging. Yeah, that, thank, which, thank, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. So um, this is cool, man. You know. Uh, this is really cool. So, um, so, you, you know, you, of course, man. And, and like I said, you, this is the first or second of many appearances on the show, but let's dig into the quantum realm. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I was going to segue into that at some point. So how much do we think the quantum realm is going to play a part in in game? I, I think, I think, gonna take a, I think it's going to play a huge part. What about you? I, I, I really do. I really do. Because, um, I don't think that the snap can be undone in the right. current right. universe uh, that 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 they uh, that the Avengers exist in, or that the old Avengers ha have been left in. Um, you know, th there's a lot of different theories as to what happened. Were they actually left behind, and then maybe the other the ones that were uh, disintegrated, the ones that quote unquote died, were they were they set off into a different universe, the Soul Stone? Mm -hmm. You know, that's that that exists in the quantum realm. Um, you know, yeah, because for those people that don't know the comics, Soul World exa exists in the Soul Stone in or the Soul Gym, as they're called in the comics, that exists. You know, where all the people go, and Adam Warlock has a huge part to play in it as well. But obviously, he's not with us in the movies yet. But yeah, I mean, just for, just for those, that's what I love about the MCU is they kind of deviate from the comics a little bit. But at the same time, a lot of people don't realize, especially comic book readers, that. Oh wait, there's a there's apparently a soul world inside the soul stone, and and a lot of people might be in there, you know. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. That's right. And in order to access that, you know, uh, um, Ant Man has access, or well, you know, has has the um, has the the technological um, ability to to get into the quantum realm. And once yeah. you once you get into the quantum realm, all of a sudden you're dealing with multiverses. You know, multiverse theories, whether people believe in that or not. But um, if that is indeed true, I mean, you have you you have you're opening the door to so much potential. Um, let's talk about, you know, opening the door to a multiverse or a different universe where the uh, where the where a mutant, you know, is, is exists. You know, um, let's let's talk about where, you know, this is the X-Men can 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 jump into this here. But at the same time in order to manipulate different timelines and to, and to manipulate rela reality in, on that, um, on that basis. Now you're looking at someone like a captain America that can, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to share a spoiler with you here, but um, you know, they can go back into 1942, you know, make these changes um, can maybe relive life um, with, uh, with, mm -hmm. Pe you know, with, with Peggy Carter. Um, and uh, I, I mean, th there's just, there's so much and i really think that with that idea it gives us the the viewer with that theory of the multiverse it gives the viewer everything that we're everything that we come to expect but also would like yeah we can give the death yet yeah, the death of the characters can happen but at the same time they can live on in different uh in different timelines and universes you know yeah um so yeah. um you know with that being said man um i, I think that it is going to have very poignant i think it's going to be the foundation of um of whatever you know they, they choose to do to beat Thanos. yeah no i agree no what i liked about one of the last recordings is we talked about the possibility or you brought up the possibility actually that in the trailer peggy carter says what does she say the world has changed some of us can never go back so basically, you know, we have to start over. So I'm thinking you brought up a really good idea, and I never really thought about it this way, of them leaving this universe as it is. Like the snap can never be undone, but trying to somehow get into another reality or multiverse and starting over that way, if that makes any sense. I think it does. You know, I I, I, I think it does. Um, what now you have the ability to give Captain America. Okay, so there's a theory, okay, uh, kind of a spoiler, and um, some say it was leaked. So if you want to edit this out, um, that's cool. But there's a theory that Captain America um, 
uh, everybody has to travel back to certain to different timelines um, mm-hmm. and, and get to these pivotal points in their lives where that set the uh, events in motion to the current uh, reality or current timeline. But where he has to sacrifice himself in 1942, fighting off Thanos to allow the rest of the Avengers to to uh, to escape Thanos or to um, you know, to save them. And right. um, what happens is that he doesn't actually die. There's a fast forward. Uh, to Bucky walking into the World War II Museum in Washington, D.C., and he sees a picture of a 90-something-year-old Captain America with Peggy Carter and their heart and their huge family, um, giving Captain America the closure that he wanted, but also um, giving him the Messiah um, ending and fate that he was always willing to 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 do, which Tony Stark had an issue doing with because mm-hmm. you know, he, he lost his parents in a certain way and he didn't understand how somebody could sacrifice themselves for the ideals. Um, I could see Tony doing that. Um, in this in this timeline, sacrificing himself um, uh, and at some point, I'm not too sure how this would work out, but to be able to you know live his life with, with, uh, with Pepper and, and having a kid um, I mean, there's so much that, that can be done, um, but uh, I, I think that it gives everybody a, a new start, you know, just like uh, Peggy said, just, you know, sometimes you've got to start all over. And I think that's the key, that's one of the keys there. So if you take that and you, you take the idea that Ant-Man um, has access into the quantum realm now, mm-hmm. I mean, it's almost a no brainer. You know, let's look at Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel. Um, is able to to work with the full, um, I guess, with a full spectrum of power that the uh, that the space stone has, you know. And so uh, I think whether that's going to be used to, I don't know, to to fuel the the quantum machine, I don't know. But you're you're looking at you're starting to put piece together a lot of pieces um, that the MCU has given us that they are going to indeed, um, I guess, manipulate different timelines or settle into different timelines, you know, and that maybe this one is over. This is done, you know? Yeah. I mean, you you never know, dude, because I I, I heard a theory as well. Like, you know, it could show at one point in time, you know, basically Scott or, or Ant-Man in the quantum realm looking at, because here's, here's how, I've had a theory all along of how I think the movie's going to play out, you know, and of course I could be wrong. It's not going to matter to me. I don't care. This is just what I think. I think, you know, long story short, I think the movie's going to start off after the snap, you know, kind of soon after Captain Marvel shows up as the scene in the post credits for Captain Marvel showed they plan or, or Tony and Nebula come back somehow. I guess they, they obviously repair the ship and, and come back, whatever. They plan an attack on Thanos. They go to Thanos. They get beaten again because I do think they're going to fail again in the movie. Yeah. Um, something happens. Maybe some people, maybe there's casualties. You know, I don't know who. Thor, Captain Marvel, someone, you know, maybe someone big dies. Uh, but I still think they're going to lose. Thanos is going to wreck shop again, beat the shit out of them, whatever, kill some people. Uh, they're going to have to retreat, come back to Earth. And then we're going to have a time jump. And in that time jump, it could be a year later because Black Widow's hair looks like it's gotten a lot longer and the reds come out and stuff like that. But I think in that time jump, that's when Ant-Man shows up. And all this time, he's been in the quantum realm looking at possible future. Because, I mean, dude, this dude's been floating in the quantum realm, dude. Who knows, like, if he's seen future events, past events, you know, if he's seen alternate realities. So with all that information, he could show up and be like, hey, guys. I have an idea, you know, and then I think the rest of the movie progresses from there. So, um, yeah, I think Ant-Man's seen some shit, bro. I think so. I, I think so. And um, I, I think there's an unawareness of what is happening in his um, in, in this timeline. Dude, and that, so that shot of him in the trailer uh, when he's looking at the post sign or the or the, the telephone pole and it shows the missing people in his face. You could just tell, like, what the fuck is going on? You know, uh, it, that is, you know, when you when you look at him in the um, when you when you look at him um, in 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 the quantum realm, you look at all these little uh, orbs and 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 um, all, all around him. You know, there's theory that says, okay, those are the souls of the dead, 
or what have not. And so he, he's come from a place. He has information with him. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he's ready to use it. I just don't think he knows what the information, you know, what how it's going to fit into um, back in the real world. But um, I, I, I really hope that um, I, I really hope that they, um, how can I explain it? I really hope that scientifically they're able to um, give us uh, an accurate depiction of quantum reality, of, the qu- of quantum mechanics and physics, because it's such an entertaining um, uh, theory, you know, that one can get into, I guess you could call it source energy or the quantum uh, zone of quantum energy, quantum whatever world, and you can manipulate reality. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, it 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 really it'll fall into the stories and into the character uh, characterizations of each of the uh, uh, of each of the uh, the superheroes, each of the Avengers. You know, everyone has a deep internal struggle, and a lot of times. Um, some of those, you've got to go to a certain level of consciousness. And we've talked about this, the level of consciousness that isn't, doesn't exist in this world. You know, uh, right now, you know, in, in, in reality, we deal with good and bad and, and, and black and white or whatever. But these heroes now are dealing with a villain who isn't even really a villain. He's justified himself. And I hate to say it, but mm-hmm. to a degree, he does make some good points, you know? So these guys yeah. are going to have to transcend themselves. They're going to have to transcend their humanity. And they're going to have to live in that level of consciousness, which is a person has got to do what they need to do in order to do the right thing for that moment or for the event. So right. that means, whether it means, you know, traveling back in time and, and and um, there have been theories of Tony having to allow his parents to be killed again. I mean, think yeah. about this. If, you know, Tony's being told you have access to a quantum realm now and you can go back and change history. One of the biggest guilt that he had was his parents dying. He can change that. You know, it's like a Captain America. You know, mm-hmm. one of the biggest you know, things regrets he had is that he didn't have a normal life, you know. And so let's 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 go there let's explore that let's see what happens and that's only going to happen if the mcu gives an accurate depiction of the quantum world world well do you do you think they would do that do you think they would risk like fucking up all of the future movies and stuff like that by doing that or are you talking about doing this in alternate realities i think doing this in alternate realities so the same lineage of the original timeline would still yeah unfold the way it did basically it, it will. I will. But I think some of these characters, I think that in order for them to go forward and to defeat a guy like a, uh, a Thanos, they're going to have to have they're going to have to deal with a lot of personal issues that that keep them in the black and white and the good and bad, good versus evil. world. I think so, too. I, I think know. this is going to be one of the most emotional movies we've ever seen in the MCU. All right. So do I. So do I. You know, we've talked about uh, we've talked about Tony Stark. Uh, reconciling the fact that that there's the tone there's tony stark and then there's iron man and he's always been torn between the two tony stark wants to get married he wants to have a kid there's a good and evil look at the sokovia accords he says no we're too powerful we're going to hurt people captain mm-hmm. america says you don't understand we have we are given an ability we're giving a a, a responsibility with this power and so we you know we have to transcend just the good and evil, you know, be, Tony, I mean, Steve Rogers has always been willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good. Mm-hmm. That is beyond, that is beyond human thinking, you know, so he's already accepted that already. He is the Messiah figure. I think that's going to happen. But Tony Stark has to be able to reconcile some of his past in order to understand that. You know, he still lives with this, with this, with this pain, you know, of his parents. And so he's trying to, you know, he's a guy that's always running from that responsibility, you know, um, even his father talked about his intelligence and how, you know, re- what a responsibility he's going to have. Um, and it's going to be different. You know, it makes him different, a different person. He doesn't live. He's not going to live in the same arena with the same rules as you know, other humans. And yeah. I think that once he accepts it, I really see I see Captain America. Making the ultimate sacrifice, but I also see Tony Stark understanding that. Hey, maybe in a different universe, I do get married to to Pepper. We do have kids, and that's good. I think that's going to give him some type of closure to understand that in the quantum realm, that 
this is all going to play out. Maybe just not with this current level of consciousness. And I know I'm getting into really deep stuff, but I'm trying yeah, to see. He, he, I'm trying to see how they're you know dealing with this. And I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, I was just going to say like you are, but at the same time, it's like I don't know how they can. I don't know how they can do all this without affecting future events. The, the The only reason, the only logical thing I could think of is, I talked about this with someone else previously, but when you're talking about using the quantum realm to go back in time to get the stones before Thanos does, like maybe right before he does, that's the only way I could see them doing this without, and, and this is excluding alternate realities and multiverses, which I do think will play a little part in that, but I don't think the MCU and Feige would want to go all out with the alternate realities and multiverses just for the sake of confusing the fuck out of everybody, which I think right. is what would happen. <laughs> right. If they got too crazy with it, but at the same time, I think it's a good way to explain yeah, I don't I don't know, man. It's like it's a good way to explain how the mutants can can come into the world now, but at the same time, dude, I keep going back to that original thought process of I think it's just as simple as going back in time through the quantum realm, jumping into time vortexes and coming out right before, like, for example, the Power Stone, the purple Power Stone. The first one Thanos mm -hmm. got was on Xandar. He destroyed Xandar, apparently wrecked the Nova Prime, which I thought was a little bit suspect because at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, one, the Nova Corps, they look pretty stacked, you know, and they put the, the stone up in a vault. And you kind of had a feeling that, okay, no one can touch this because the Nova Corps is fucking superior but apparently thanos and his his clan went to xandar and wreck shop and got the stone so i'm thinking okay well why don't the avengers just go back in time to right before thanos showed up talk to the nova Corps or whatever and then go get the stone there's also a theory i read of the avengers go back in time to get the stone before thanos does but they mistime it and thanos shows up when they're there to get the stone so they have to stop him from getting the stone just a little shit like that but then you know it's it also goes back to, okay, well, if they go back in time and get one stone, that's all they need to do because they'll have one stone and that'll defeat the purpose of Infinity War because he needs to complete a gauntlet. So could it really be that simple? No, I don't think so. So basically what I'm trying to say is any fucking route I try to go to as to how to figure out the events of this movie, it always leads back to, well, no, that's not going to work because of this. Well, that won't work because of this. So... Bro, I have no fucking idea how they're going <laughs> to fix this. I, I really yeah. don't. It's it's gotten to a point where, you know, I've spent a few weeks talking to other people and coming up with theories and reading theories online and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's always it always comes back to how are they going to do that without – they can't do that because there's a roadblock here. There's a roadblock there. There's roadblocks everywhere. So I truly am, for the first time in my life, I feel I'm stumped as to – I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but at the same time, I love it because I, I'm going to be surprised. My mind's going to be blown. You know, like I said, whether it's a complicated route of multiverses and realities, or if it's a simple route of just going back in time and staying all in the same universe, I'm sure we're, I'm sure we're all going to love it either way. Yeah, we, it's, we, it's we tough. are. It's tough to try and figure out, though, man. We are, but you know, I think one thing that I really want. Um, is you know we we've grown with these characters, and I think that some of them need closure. Captain yep. America, uh, I, I look forward to his closure, and I really think that he is he has been on a collision course with um, the ultimate sacrifice. I, I really I, I believe, really so believe too. that you know, um, and you know uh, Iron Man. We've talked about this. Uh, I think that he's finally going to reconcile the fact that he has to be willing to accept that he as a superhero, but as this person who's seen the, like, amongst the gods now, um, is, is going to have to accept the fact that he may have to make that ultimate sacrifice and sacrifice everything he owns. That there, he cannot live with, two, with a, a foot in each world. Yeah, I think Peggy, and I mean, I'm sorry, I think Pepper understands that. Um, Ever since uh, Avengers one, when he, you know, was going to sacrifice himself, almost did. Uh -huh. you know? it, it messed yep. him up pretty bad, you know. And I think he's going to have to get over that. I'm not going to call it selfishness, but that he's going to have to let go of Tony. He's going to have to let go of all the things that hold Tony back. And um, I, I want to see that, you know. I want to see Hulk. Um, uh, I want to see Hulk come back. I want to see, um, you know. Let's let's give. Um, 
let's give Hawkeye some some closure. You know, let's you know, is he going to have to sacrifice himself and allow his daughter to take on the the mantle of you know of of uh, you know of, of his I don't know of his um, of his efforts. Um, yeah. I want to yeah. know what happens with Nick Fury. You know, um, I, I want to see all of this. But the fact that if you go to IMDb and you see a lot of the old, um, we'll call them, um, we'll call them linchpin characters, <laughs> the a term you and I have used before and, and other yep. Yep. writing methods. But, you know, let's let's talk about um, let's talk about Dr. Strange. Let's talk about um, um, uh, uh, what's your name? Um you know, flees me the the character the ancient one was that it oh the yeah 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 ancient yeah one. the ancient one that comes back there's a lot of the characters that help these yeah these heavy heavy evolve. rumors she's supposed to appear in this movie somehow right and so we know that they're going to deal with something we know they're going to deal with something well you know, dude the, here's another thing too and i don't mean to cut you off but there, huh? there's been a lot of rumors ancient one's supposed to appear in this movie crossbones who's dead quicksilver from age of ultron who's dead it's like that kind of leads me to believe that there is going to be some form of time travel. You know, uh, there was a, even a rumor going around a long time ago that Ultron might appear in some way or form. And I'm like, what? You know, so I don't, I don't know, man. It's funny you say that because in the next room right now, my youngest Mateo, my seven year old, is watching um, the Avengers, um, the future Avengers, which is the Avenger Kids, in which all of the Avengers were killed in the Age of Ultron. Oh wow! Yeah, he's watching a cartoon, so it's awesome. <laughs> That's very coincidental. That's badass, it though. Is. Yeah. It is. It is, man. I'm telling you, my kids are, dude. They they are. They're gonna carry the. Um, they're carrying the mantle, man, of what we have set forth for them. So they're gonna be listening to this podcast. I'm pretty sure throughout the ages and say, hey, remember when Dad and Zach were talking about this stuff? Yeah, they <laughs> can they can play this podcast in 30, 40 years, you know, and <laughs> just look back on it, man. But you know, you know um, and who knows what the MCU will be like at that point? Well, fuck, who, who knows what the knows? world will be like at that point? Jesus Good Christ, God! <laughs> but you know, um, uh, one one thing that I I I've been thinking about, and this this is kind of last night. I'd say last night I was I was uh, I was playing pool, and it, this thought just stuck with me. But okay, so Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, right now, ever since the, when in the movie when she had the chip taken out of her uh, neck that really um, limited her. Yeah. Um, so now she wields the full power of the space stone, right? Mm -hmm. How is that going to be used? How, if she can wield the full power, doesn't that, doesn't that, I don't know. Doesn't that, uh, I mean, what, what does that, mm, does that cancel out, you know, the space stone and the gauntlet all of a sudden now Thanos only has full power to, 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 to five stones. I mean, what, you know. If There's, you remember, Wanda could could control the the Mind Stone because she was created from it, or not created right. from it, but she her, she got her powers from it. So she got her powers from it, right? But she never really faced off with Thanos because right when Thanos arrived, she was pretty much dusted soon after. So if you're talking about like from a fighting standpoint, Captain Marvel, yeah. and, I don't know. That's a good question. Peter Quill was able to hold the um um uh, what's what's the stone we were talking uh, about the power stone. Uh, the, the power stone didn't peter quill hold the power stone yeah but that's point? when he was still half uh celestial because i think in guardians 2 when he kills his dad ego his godlike powers go away because i think when he tells him as he's dying like if you kill me you know you you're only, you'll only be human you won't be a god anymore or half god but does so, he i mean i mean we don't we don't know that for, there was never any anything to to verify that allegedly he kills him wait what do you mean does he die or no 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 that, that he did lose his godlike powers oh yeah but, yeah i, I I mean, your guess is as good as mine. You know, and 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 um, so when, okay, when Vision was in Wakanda, mm -hmm. and he was being healed, wasn't was was the uh, um, was wasn't he cloned, or what, wasn't wasn't a lot of his data uploaded there? There has been a heavy rumor I've heard on a few Reddit pages that there might there might be something to do with Vision in Endgame, in a sense of previously uploaded or previously tinkered with, uh, like data or so something like that. I, I think they're, I think I think you're hitting on something, man. I don't yeah, know so about I cloning, but I think I think a lot of his system could be in Shuri's uh, what you call it. 
like database. Dat- database, yeah. So I'm I'm starting. You know, it's look. We've done two of these. Because yeah, because we don't know how close and, we don't know how close she was to getting the stone out of his head. She you're right. Been like twenty percent, thirty percent, fifty percent. We don't know. So we don't know. I don't know. What were you saying? You know, and 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 you know, we we've done two of these interviews already, and all they do is just get me to think of more and more theories. I know they have know. me looking back more and more. I start talking to my wife about him, and she brings something up. Well, you remember this? And I'm like, wait a second, you're right about that. Twenty two movies later, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they put in there. A lot of Easter eggs in there. A lot of hints. A lot of clues. Yeah. Um. I mean, Doctor Strange, the guy's a wild card. You don't, I mean, with the time stone, you, you don't really know. I mean, the, you know, the, what he's seen in those, what, 14, was it 14 million? Um, uh, well, 14 scenarios? million, 605. But 605. look, man, there, there's, there's also a theory, too, of uh, when Doctor Strange gives Thanos the time stone in Infinity War, it's, it's cursed, or there's some type of spell on it, or... Uh, he did something to it and gave it to Thanos because if you notice when Thanos grabs it he doesn't touch the stone directly he touches the glow around it so a lot right. of people have been saying did Thanos or did Strange give him the time stone from in the past did he go back into the past and get it and give it to him or is he stuck on a loop or there's just so much shit floating around about Strange and the time stone like I think something's up there I don't know what I can't put my finger on it, but I think something's up with this time stone. So I'm I think so. I, I I do. I, I think so. strange I think so. what he was doing. He's a smart motherfucker. He was. He was. Yeah, he, you know. He, he, he definitely. Doing. You're right. You're right. You know. And um, he, I, I, I don't. You know. This. This is really. Uh, this. This really. It. Anytime we bring something up, it takes you into it well, branches yeah. off into whole different <laughs> tangents. You really, you really get a mind workout when you start thinking about in game, bro. <laughs> you do, man. You really oh, do, man. Um, you really start to break a mental sweat, man. You do, man. You know, I, when I was looking at at Captain Marvel, <laughs> you know, which by the way, Captain Marvel was a good movie. I'm yeah, I was going to segue into that, so I'm glad you brought that up. Let's talk you know, Captain Marvel. Let's okay, talk. Let's, let's, let's segue talk. into Carol Danvers. <laughs> Let's do that, man. So, good movie, entertaining. Did what it have to do. Had to do. Um, I think the direction wasn't as um, I don't know. Wasn't as um, deep as it should have been. Yeah, I, I really think that Brie Larson. I think they could have had her get deeper into the character development. I mean, you've got a person who's dealing with uh, an identity um, uh, issue here. You know. Yeah. And. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden they're given the power of, of, uh, of the space stone, you know, and, and, uh, how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you reconcile that? You know? And, um, but Hey, it did what it was supposed to do. It was a great character intro film, just like the other ones. I think mm-hmm. it landed on its feet. Yeah. Uh, I was not, you know, I was fairly entertained. My kids were entertained. Um, they were not, um, they did not shy away from the idea, and I've got two boys that the that the hero was superhero was a was a was a female. They they could care less. They had a great time with it. Uh, yeah. it made me feel great that they didn't shy away from that. There, uh, I do think the Nick Fury um, origin story was a little silly, little campy, um, but at the same time, hey, you, you're 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 going to have a lot of um, your you're given a character with different um, levels now. Um, and uh, that's okay. I, I can deal with that there. Um, but at the same time, if you're looking at the overall picture, Carol Danvers has the full power of the space stone. Yeah. So what is going to happen with that? We know she's not going to be the savior. There's no way she can just come in, character intro, a month later she comes in, saves everybody, boom. No, and that would piss me and I'm sure a lot of fans off. Like, this is a team effort. This is the Avengers. This isn't Captain Marvel Endgame. This is the Avengers. She can't come in here. She hasn't earned that. She hasn't earned it yet. She can't come in here and be the one to kill Thanos because it would be very anticlimactic. Like, oh, wait, she just swoops in and kills him? That's 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 not... No, that's, that's anticlimactic, man. It's got to be... A team effort, and thankfully, I did hear the Russos come out and say that she is going to be a part of the team. She has a part to play. It's not going to be her killing Thanos, blah 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 blah. But uh, you know, at the same token, it's like, yeah, she's powerful and all, but 
Thanos has all six motherfucking stones, dude. He is a he's basically a god right now. You know, he he is a god. You're right. And, Not one uh, person can kill this dude right now. No, you know, you're right, man. You know, and and um, you know, it, it's not gonna it's not gonna take it's not gonna take Ant Man. You know, going up Thanos's you know rear end. As much as I would love that, though. Oh God, <laughs> man, it's sick. I can't even think about that. Yeah. No, um, but, but to harken back on your original. To harken back on your original uh, point about Captain Marvel is I, I pretty much agree with the same with the same thing. You know, as I said, I did a movie review a while back and it's middle of the pack for me. But my, my biggest issue, and I said this in the two previous recordings we did, I just didn't think she was able to grab the emotion she should have. She just didn't get there for me a few times. I just I wanted as a director, I was thinking like when I was watching this, just give me a little bit more. Just you're almost there. Just keep going. And and people have tried to defend this shit by saying, oh, well, she, she was playing it off so wooden and stoically because she didn't know who she was. And I'm like, well, let me argue with you real quick. I think that any person like that who was trying to figure out who she were, she would be frantic. Like, like who, who am I? Who am I? What, what's, what's going on? Talk to me. Tell me. Tell me. It's like her emotional levels will be all over the place, dude. So I say the stuff about, oh, she didn't know who she was, so she'd be wooden. It's, it's complete bullshit, you know? Um, any person who's trying to find out her past, they're going to be a little emotional about it, man. I don't fucking care who you are. So, yeah, I just think the the directing there was a little green as far as getting in Bree's head and pulling the performance out of her that we needed to see from an emotional standpoint. And I, honestly, I hate to say it, but there was one scene where she's talking to her friend in the kitchen and the friend is telling her what happened and about the crash that uh, Captain Marvel absorbed all her powers in and I felt that she was much more effective in that scene than Brie Larson was. She even started to cry, and then it cuts to Brie Larson listening to her, and it's just stone face, and it's like, that's kind of a killer for me, man. Yeah, you know, just because you're an alien doesn't mean that uh, you, you're not, you don't have emotion, you know? Yeah, because I mean, she tries to go into an emotional stasis later when she finally finds out what happened. She runs out into the yard or some shit, and she starts tearing up, and it's like, where has this been the entire fucking movie? Uh, <laughs> you know, so I know. yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, man. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, but regardless, though, it was, it was, it was a decent movie. I, I didn't have, I didn't think it was the worst. I didn't think it was the best. It was all right. Like you said, it was a good introduction movie. So I mean, th and that's all we needed. But um, I think, uh, yeah, to to go back to what you said though, I, I don't think Captain Marvel is going to swoop in and save the day. I think it's going to be a team effort. Like I said, I think she's going to come in. They're going to go to Thanos, and I think they're going to lose right off the bat. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's just my thought process on it. They are, they are, because I think that once again, you know, we talked about this is you cannot say, save, I mean, you cannot solve the same problem. You cannot solve a problem using the same, um, the, you know, the same answers or the same, using the same method over and over again of the problems and solve. That's just, you know, it's just, it's, it's insanity. Yeah. Um, and I think that the Avengers are are really relying on their own individual powers. But what's gonna what needs to happen, and this has just been a you know this has been the same uh, theme throughout the twenty two uh, films is that they have to transcend that idea. They have to transcend that idea in the ego that they themselves are powerful enough to 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 save humanity. It's going to be a collective effort, and I think that the Avengers have to really evolve. Going back to Joseph Campbell's um, story of the superhero through ancient times is that it's a funny thing. It's usually in three parts. Superhero tries with what he can do, understands that he cannot, has to let go of certain aspects of himself. Now, remember, we're looking at the at the Avengers as one entity. So think of the Avengers as one person. Has to let go of certain things. Certain things have to, he's got to sacrifice. So she's got to sacrifice that one thing or several things that hold them back in order to transcend themselves into the same level of consciousness or existence that the enemy is. In this case, it's Thanos. It's God. It's a, he's a God. You know, he's godlike. So, you know, the gods do not live with the same rules that we do. Right. And so a superhero or a team of superheroes cannot play by the same rules, which which takes us all the way back to the quantum realm. The quantum mm -hmm. realm, if you really look at history, you look at kind of newer physics um, and ideas, heck, you can even go back into the Buddhist teachings, is the quantum realm is where the gods exist. 
And that is all possibilities. There are no good. There's no bad. There's no left and right. There just is what there is. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I see the Avengers, the Avengers. Now you're setting up an opportunity for them to have a few sacrifices, but also evolve into this new team. Whether that's going to be in a different universe or whether that's going to be in this universe, who knows? Um, but I do see a lot of this, the character journeys culminating into this evolution into, I mean, you look at Hawkeye. Hawkeye has evolved into Ronin, you know, and that's already taken place. Um, mm-hmm. And Captain America has led the evolution. He's become the, he became from the patriotic good guy to being the outlaw. He understands all of this. He knew that he's got to transcend all of that. Um, and I, I can see that, you know, I see that happening. I see it happening now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, so going back to, you know, to, to, to Carol Danvers, now she's got the full power of the stone. And what is, she, what are they going to do with her? You know, how are they going to, she's new to this. You I know, know. She's completely know. new. She just got back from helping these dudes find a new neighborhood to live in. And so <laughs> she's coming back and she, even though it took her 20 fucking years to do it, 20 years, right? Like, come on, man. So I think there's more to her than we don't know right now. I think in that 20 years, I think there's, I think there's more to her than, than we realize right now. I think so. I, I think so. And I because, think because that, you're talking about a girl who has had 20 plus years to hone her powers and refine her craft. You know, I think, uh, I think she's going to be unlike anything we saw in her origin movie. Let's just put it that way. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I do. Um, and so, do you remember, and I'm kind of jumping around here because there's just so much, but do you remember yeah. that the when the Red Skull uh, appeared in Infinity War in front of sure. Thanos and he says that um, that he was uh, he was uh, sentenced to guide people to the stone, but he was never allowed, yep. that they did not allow him? I always wondered, who is they? Who are they? Who is the they that he he speaks of? I don't think he ever said they. I think he he just referenced it as a stone. Like I think he said, uh, you know, I I held I even held one in my hand, but it cast me out, banished me here, guiding others to a treasure I cannot possess or some shit. I don't think he ever said they. If I'm not, Did not I could be wrong. They? I have to go back and rewatch that scene. I could be wrong, but if he is saying they, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I like no how idea. was what? Okay, within what? What or who banished him to to Vormir? I I don't know. I don't know. You see, don't know. It, it's it's that. I mean, we're looking. Are I, we looking at a microcosm of something? You know, well, that there's the. No, I, I think at some point here soon in the MCU, we're going to start to see inklings of the you know the eternities, the big uh, like the living tribunal, for example, the big celestials, yeah. the godlike creatures, the universal like creatures. Because of what Thanos did, it it disrupted the entire universe. So I think the Eternals and the eternities, I think they're going to start showing up because they're like, dude, what the fuck's going on in our universe, man? So uh, there's also some rumors about it, could the living tribunal fucking appear in Endgame? And if that's the case, then we're really, really getting into some hardcore shit because I don't know if you know who about the living tribunal from the comics, but that's like a big cosmic entity. Um, from, I do. From Yeah, so if it's like... If this motherfucker shows up, dude, then then it, then it's just take me in. I have no I have no idea. I have no idea. Just give me the fucking movie already, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, man, uh, I I do think that there's there's higher powers like that though the the cosmic entities and stuff like that. So, and I think we're gonna start to see some because you we apparently the Eternals movie, which they're finally making. I'm actually kind of excited about that. Yeah. Uh, I think that goes into production later this year and it's supposed to come out next year. So it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're going to start to go cosmic, man. So it's going to get, it's going to get crazy. And, and, and I'm, I apologize for getting back to this, but I'm still kind of stuck on, on red skull. Cause I just, I just pulled this up right now as we're talking. Okay. And, cool. um, okay. So he tells, um, he tells Thanos that the soul stone extracts a terrible price and yeah. uh, Thanos says he's ready. Red Skull replies. We all think that at first we are all wrong. 
indicating that Red Skull tried to do this as well. Remember, he was so yeah. is not the first guy. He goes on to explain that he also tried to collect all the Infinity Stones, referring to the scene in the first Avenger. However, he was then banished to Vormir, guiding others to a treasure he cannot possess. This is suspect. Yeah. Why was he banished? Why didn't anything happen to Thanos when he began collecting the stones? Who banished him exactly? Was it the Tesseract itself? You know, that's that's some interesting things because what you're saying now is maybe they'll touch upon that again. You know, maybe, maybe, and it and it all goes again to where the Avengers are are coming to this awakening to this awareness that their world, the Earth, or what they've seen is only a microcosm of the entirety of existence out there. Mm-hmm. And that their existence is very minute compared to, um, you know, what they have to, what they have to confront. You know, I think, and that that all goes down to, you know, uh, a, a conscious level and awareness. Sometimes you cannot, you can't. Um, it's something that you can't communicate. I think, but I think Captain America has always been that guy. He's lived from his heart. He's lived not from an ego point, but I think that he's lived from a, an understanding deep inside that he's willing to make a sacrifice for a greater good. And when people mm-hmm. do that, you live amongst the gods. I mean, you know, whether you say that's Jesus Christ or whoever these other martyrs have always been, but he's always known that. He just doesn't know. He doesn't understand the um, cerebrally. He doesn't know what that is, but he's always been, you know, He's been one of those guys that's always been a messiah type figure. Tony, his whole character arc is to that realization. And so I do. So we're, we're talking about, you know, the um, the the you're talking about the living tribunal. You know, this is a type of entity that lives on this higher level of consciousness. Right. And, right. Um, you know, there is no good or bad. Kind of like, kind of like Dormammu in Doctor Strange. Yes, yes. That that yes. entity like that, you know. Yeah, I yes. think there are more of those out there. And I think that the Avengers, when they do that, now they're going to open up the door for mutants, X Men, Fantastic actually, Four. Yeah, and actually, I just thought of this, like you know, speaking, going back to what you said about multiverses and alternate realities, Doctor Strange kind of touched upon that with the mirror dimension, the the dark dimension. So it's like. Fuck, maybe they will explore alternate dimensions and realities with this shit. Because we've already seen so. it kind of with Doctor Strange. Yeah. I mean, and if you want to, I mean, I mean you, you bring in the characters now that, you know, now that Fox is under um, uh, Disney. Fuck you, hell, man. I mean, Silver Surfer, you're going to have to bring in. I mean, I really hope they redo that, but you're going to have to bring in. And, and Galactus. Galactus as well. Give me Galactus, real no. Galactus, not that bullshit cloud that we got in. The Silver Surfer movie, you know, right? Stupid, stupid, but hey, man, we could talk about this shit till we're blue in the face. So let's uh, God. let's fucking wrap this shit up, dude. Uh, I do, do have, I do have a few questions for you. Oh, these are always just, good. Just, just give them to me, speedball. Don't go into de- detail or length. Just let's do this a speed sure. round. Three questions. One. Yes, sir. Will the Guardians of the Galaxy reunite and get Gamora back? Yes. Yeah, I think so. But too. I might don't not be think all she, at once. Yes, but I don't think she's ready to rejoin yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there, especially now that Guardians 3 is back on with James Gunn. So, kind of wondering what they're going to do here. But uh, uh, who will pick up Cap Shield, Bucky or Falcon? Oh, Bucky. Yeah, I, I think so too. Because there was rumors too of like, well, what if Bucky goes back in time as well? What if they both go back in time? And it's like, I think, you know. Bucky would stay to carry on the mantle of Captain America for him, just like in the comics. Bucky, absolutely. Yeah. And plus, I'd rather see his wife do it than a side chick Falcon, you know, so. (laughs) 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 Uh, Last question. Out of the original six Avengers, who do you think will die? Iron Man, Cap, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, and Hawkeye? Captain America, no doubt. But I've got to say, I, I still believe that Tony Stark is going to find his end. Also, he's going to meet his fate. I don't think we're going to lose Thor. I don't think I don't think they're done with Hulk. Man, I, I really hate this Universal Marvel thing because it's really deprived us of a true standalone sequel with Mark Ruffalo. Uh, I, I I've always wished we could have another Hulk film. 
But um, I just I don't see it in the cards right now. Uh, and then Black Widow's getting her own movie next year. Is it going to be a prequel? Is it going to be a sequel? We don't know yet. And then Hawkeye. Don't know about Hawkeye. Don't really care right now. <laughs> I, I, I do kind of feel for the guy because, like I said, in that trailer shot, I think his whole family's going to turn to dust in front of him. So, you yeah, know. I think so. I think so. I think that's what they're leading towards. But uh, cool, man. Uh, well, if you got anything else to add, bro, get it in you know now. What? Because you know what. I do. Thank you. Thank you for having the show, man, because um, I would go crazy not being able to talk to anybody about this kind of stuff. <laughs> Good violins here, man. I appreciate no, it. So no, much, it's, it's, it's a pleasure, man. It's so fucking fun to do this, to just chill. Like, there's no formalities. There's no interview style thing. It's just a relaxing, chill podcast. We can just talk back and forth about theories and ideas and speculations. That's what I've always wanted. I love the indie rundown. I love what we do connecting with other filmmakers and artists and interviewing them. But I love also having this platform as well. You know, so yeah. it's the best it's the best of both worlds for me. And I love it, it's, man. And I'm going to continue this comic shit well after Endgame. This is for for however long I want to fucking do this because there's always comic book shit coming out, dude. Yes. There it yep. is, man. So Anyways, uh, all right, well, that's going to do it. We'll be back, man, because I might want to record with you again like maybe a week before Endgame comes out just to get some final thoughts and shit in. So we'll definitely be back. But in the meantime, go back and listen to this. Go back and listen to our other episodes. Let us know your theories. Send me questions. Send me ideas. Send me speculations. I'm all ears. So for my guest, Anthony Hernandez. Hernandez. For myself, we will see you all next week. Peace. Peace.